We wanted to understand um, how Americans feel about nuclear waste. And when we started this issue, we didn't really know. You know do Americans even know anything about nuclear waste? Do they care about nuclear waste? Do they think that it's fine as it is? Do they believe that the government will solve the problem? We didn't know. And we were really, um, you know, astounded by the results that we got. So not only do Americans care deeply about nuclear waste, but they really believe that nuclear waste innovation is important. The world hasn't really decided what to do with nuclear waste yet. So nuclear power is a great solution for making energy without producing greenhouse gases, but as a byproduct it produces nuclear waste, and we as a society have not yet decided what to do with it safely. And the present solution is just kind of to store it put in a thing called dry cask storage above ground right next to the nuclear plants. And that's not a great long-term solution. It's not even a great short-term solution. And there are those who would think, well, let's just not use nuclear power again. Okay, that may be your position, but you still have the waste challenge. This isn't just an energy problem. This is a global issue that we're going to have to deal with at some point, no matter what we think about nuclear energy. It is not a good situation because they're they're piling up on the site. You we've got roughly a hundred sites uh, because we had roughly a hundred reactors. There's piling stuff up piling day. up piling up every day, and it's a security issue, it's a, a contamination issue, and so you want to actually put this away more safely because it's now essentially either lightly submerged underground or uh, actually above ground in these so-called dry cast. A really interesting statistic that everyone I think needs to understand is that one in three people live within 50 miles of nuclear waste. So that even though you may not know that you're around nuclear waste, it's around you. And that's a really important thing to remember is that it will stay around you an unsolved problem until we actually put our time, money, and resources into solving it. In 1986, they decided all the waste would go into Yucca Mountain. And in order to end debate and make it go more smoothly, they wrote into law that Yucca Mountain is the solution and nothing else will be considered. Now, Yucca Mountain ran into problems. Uh, the geology wasn't exactly what they thought it was. There were earthquakes nearer. There was water dribbling into the tunnels. They, they, they came up with solutions to this, but nobody could offer an alternative because it was the government law that this is the solution. Yucca Mountain was designed to store 70,000 tons of nuclear waste. Right now we have 70,000 tons of nuclear waste. We need another facility. We thought we would get involved in something called the Nuclear Forum, in which nuclear issues were discussed. This would at least inform us on the issue, even though we didn't have any particular ideas of things that would work. In one of these phone calls, uh, someone showed a, a, a picture they had been distributed uh, of what was called borehole waste storage. We saw this waste in a borehole. We knew all about boreholes uh, because of our experience in, in, in natural gas. And my reaction was, oh God. This is the obvious way to do it. How could I have been so stupid not to notice this? So it was an epiphany. It was Rich's epiphany. So we were in this meeting at this nuclear forum call, and um, we were talking about borehole storage for nuclear waste. And he said, well, of course, that's the way we should do it. And I said, well, yes, of course, that's the way we should do it. What they're proposing is very intriguing, and it sounds like it really could be practical. So what are they doing? They're writing piggyback on what the oil industry has figured out how to do, which is how to drill deep in underground, maybe 4,000 feet, how to then go horizontally, so it's a slow curvature, and another, so a mile deep, roughly speaking, and another two miles across. And in this, they can put it into a rock basin where they can drill a hole, and they can take the fuel rods as they exist. There's clusters of fuel rods from the reactors, and then begin to slide these fuel rods down deep in the hole. Those horizontal wells are drilled at that length all the time today. Hundreds and hundreds. In the shale basins in the U.S. today, there are over 100,000 
horizontal wells that have been drilled to produce. What we're talking about here is drilling it not to hydraulically fracture, but to dispose. There is a place in New Mexico called the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant where we put nuclear waste from nuclear bombs. We put that in a salt dome in New Mexico. In Finland and Sweden, they're digging deep into dark, hard rock and putting their nuclear waste there. We know that putting something underground can protect us. The problem is, is that we've had no chance to innovate on where and how we put it underground. We've just thought if you dig a big hole, maybe it will all be okay. The last nuclear waste piece of legislation was written before I was born, and we haven't really dived back into it since then, because since the 1950s and 1960s, we decided, oh, we can produce nuclear energy, it will have this byproduct, we'll, we'll solve that problem in the future. I think that the big problem is that, that we're sort of locked in, in a, 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 a policy deadlock. We know that the House and the Senate have not agreed on how to move forward, and what we really need is we need to have some type of legislation that essentially says we, if, if, if private companies or others develop better technologies, the federal government should use them. The Nuclear Waste Innovation Act would allow not only us to apply for licenses, it would allow anybody to apply for licenses from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Now we have seen that there are other companies that are likely to get involved. We've seen a number of companies um, look to get involved with the Department of Energy borehole program. Um, so, so there's clearly companies that do think that they have the expertise to become involved in this area. The problem is they haven't been able to get into it because there's no market there for a private sector company to be in this business. In 2018, the Nuclear Waste Innovation Act, or whatever we call it, will fundamentally change nuclear waste policy by barely changing nuclear waste policy. It will say private companies are allowed to dispose of nuclear waste. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission, I think, is remarkably competent and that they also have a regulatory framework that can be adapted to and used for new disposal technologies as well. So I'm confident that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, if the federal government were to say that we would, we would use privately developed waste disposal capabilities, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission could review and license these technologies. I'm, I'm quite confident of that. Now we're starting to see that both Democrats and Republicans are coming together and saying we recognize that there's a need for this. We like that it's pro-environment, it's pro um, finding a solution to global warming and at the same time it's also a free market economic reform saying let's get rid of the government monopoly and allow this opportunity to be available to anyone who has a solution. If you go and take a look at what NASA has done in this last decade by supporting commercial development of rocket technology you'll end up with your SpaceX's that completely change the way that things are done. So innovation is feasible here the question is, how do you unlock the capabilities so that, that you can pursue it? And it's really, I think, pretty simple. All the government needs to do is say, yes, if, if, you, if you can develop technologies and license them through the NRC, we'd become a customer. We would use these technologies to meet our responsibilities uh, to manage nuclear waste. I am the least qualified person to say that I am tired of waiting because I have only been in this industry for about 10 years, but I have mentors who have seen nuclear waste not move forward for their lifetime. I will not let that happen. It is absolutely the time for us to solve a problem that we've been waiting to solve for a really long time. It's a Silicon Valley style of starting a business applied to a non-Silicon Valley domain. Right, so geology and nuclear waste are not typical Silicon Valley domains. But the idea of starting a company, hiring the best and the brightest, working through the most difficult problems first, and taking a risk, raising investment and taking a risk on the fact that the market will accept it is very Silicon Valley. We have this big problem and we have a lack of innovation because it's been a government monopoly. I think if we allow the, the innovation of the American spirit to jump into this industry, we're going to see something in 10 years time that is dramatically different from what we have today.